What is happening? Oh my God. Yes, girl. Oh my God. Oh, that, now that's spooky ooky. Uh-huh. Welcome back gay schools and everyone in between to our YouTube channel, The, the Horror Bandwagon. Sergio. And my name is Cody. And we are boys for hard analysis. Criticism. And spooky ooky. And sometimes kooky. Entertainment. And welcome back to another Fall of the House of Usher reaction. Today we are covering the final episode of the mm -hmm. season. This is episode eight, The Raven. Now I want to say The Raven is probably the most popular story I think of so. Edgar Allan Poe, right? I think this is probably the single most well-known piece of work that he did. See, I... I know of the Raven, but I do not remember anything about the Raven. So I can't wait till we like cover the story after the episode, but this is the final one. It all leads up to this. And I know the previous episode was crazy. Lots of things are being revealed. Um, and it definitely seems like Verna was like, not on my watch. Yeah. You are not dying like this. And it seems like Madeline was like, coming up with like a little bit of a scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of things that we need to know. We need to know like why Madeline is down in the basement. We need to know how, like what happens between Dupin and uh, Roderick. And we need to know, if, if, even if, we don't even know if we're gonna touch upon it, but the wife, what happens to Annabelle Lee? Yes, and what happens to Lenore and her mother? <laughs> Well, we're gonna have to find out. There's a lot of ground to cover, but we are not gonna make you wait any longer because honestly, we don't want to either. So before we get started, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. And if you wanna support the channel even more, you can go over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the horror bandwagon, or you can click the join button below to join our YouTube membership. And don't forget to check out our discord where you can talk to us about this and anything else that's on your mind. The link is gonna be in the description below, but without further ado, we present to you the finale of Fall of the House of Usher. Girl, it's a raven. I hear some ravens in my house. 941,878 since 1985. I'm guessing people died of ligodome. But we know better, don't we? I love Millions, this outfit. Roderick. She is like, here's the cleavage, Roderick. Mm -hmm. Your tally is fucking impressive, Roderick Usher. The heels are healing, mm -hmm. for sure. I tried to explain that to your sister, that she wasn't going to change the math. <laughs> yeah, Madeline <laughs> truly was just like, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I tried to loop on me. Name your price. Oh, sweetie, you are funny. Though it means that she probably can be stopped because Madeline did try to trick her. I don't know. Incorporated. Oh my God, what? What is happening? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, shit, you bitch! <laughs> Fucking scared me. <laughs> so glad I was not holding my wine. It would be all I over know, the carpet. It would have been like <laughs> in your face. Horrible accident, but it's important he died upstanding. Who knows what she might have done to herself in her current state? He mutilated her. Did he? Yes, you fucking yeah. tell him. How did she take out her teeth? Hmm? Your mother, as much as she's been through, she understands his family pretty well, and I promise you. Um, she's been out of commission for a while, girl. Mm -hmm. I don't care what's good for the family or the company. This is about my mom. Yes, girl. Lenore, you were always my favorite. And if you think you're coming near her with another pair of pliers over my dead body, you fucking ghoul. Oh, yes! yes! Uh, <laughs> well, this is awkward. <laughs> she truly is like, you, you should be dead. Not if they didn't already have it cracked. You brokered this, Arthur. Made your move when? After Vic? Just good math. 
He looks. He looks. Scared. He looks shook. Shooketh. He's like, which usher will kill me the worst? <laughs> <laughs> and neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea. Oh, she's alive. Okay. I hope so. I'm hoping. When people asked how you took them, how you convinced them away from me, he's rich. Oh. Unless of them came back each time until one day they were empty, they were siphoned. He started filling them up with. She, he really took everything from her. Like, it's so fuck. He fucked over so many people. Yeah, go walk away. Oh, you were, we were right. We were right. A Rufus Griswold's arm on your shoulder. We're not done with him. I have to go. Don't be stupid. No, I. Uh, I don't like how this is gonna go. But you're not him, are you? I made him up. For the moon never beams. Oh, I just want to protect her. You said you'd tell me how they all died, and you did. Yeah. But you also said you'd confess. There were some murders that you talked about. No more skeletons in the closet. Tell me what happened. Yeah, I mean, we got like it. Like an hour more left mm -hmm. of this episode. Wish I'd said that. Hey! Oh, wait. This is probably the Fortunato party. Oh, shit. There he is! <laughs> oh! He kills him. Uh -huh. I, oh, I fucking knew it. Put it together and you just played your part. No, I may have already said that. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. You're a Sherry man, aren't you? Holy shit. <gasps> Amontillado! Amontillado. A powerful. Amontillado. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, 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 no! Don't be shy. Bottoms up. Let's go. I'm gonna savor it. I actually gotta hit that. Now I wish I had some wine so that I can join with the with the festivities. Well, here I'll toast. Oh, <laughs> <gasps> oh, girl! This is gonna be the foundation of my. Notice how the brick wall in the back is. Yeah. Oh my God. It's with you. Mm. I thought you were a cool fish when I first met you, but I like you better this way. Mm. Ah. You know what? Madeline likes it rough. Go for her. You can get over here. You can do anything you want to me. <laughs> Except that challenge. Oh, girl. Okay. I don't know. There's a lot of like loose nails and screws mm -hmm. over here that. Big, strong, powerful man. That's what she was like. If you can get over here, mm -hmm. oh no! Oh, so they didn't even. I mean, they, they they did kill him, but they're literally just walling him in. We're gonna be finishing this wall and still be hearing. Seriously, what is this? Hey! 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 This is like being buried alive. How did they think of this plan? I just don't understand. Well, grave robbing. Corpses disappearing after participating in 49 trials. Oh, I imagine. He was doing that. Oh, shit. I get it. I never should have made Roger take the fall for this. Right? That's what this is, isn't it? And, 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 and you're right. I'm you're all awful people, so <laughs> I just want to see how this turns out. I'm more busy thinking about how, like, this was many years ago. Yeah. I have, like, none of those pipes ever need to be replaced. Yeah, we never like. do any maintenance down here. I mean, they're now in charge, so they can probably make sure that everything here is fine. Three million. 
dollars fucking each dude they're already almost done this is also just like so tedious that i'd be like listen i've already done this much <laughs> i'm not undoing it <laughs> you can make all the noise you want and no one's due back at work for a week so happy new year no one's due back at work for a week do you think he would die there after a week? Oh, shit. So then I'm afraid you're in the dark. I mean, depending on how airtight this is, I'm assuming it's very airtight. Otherwise, it'll start to smell eventually. Yeah. He's going to run out of oxygen before he dies of thirst, but he could only last a couple of days. Wow. I mean, listen, he's a fucking awful person. He did a lot of, like, corrupt shit. Mm-hmm. But that, what a way to go. What a way to go. I can't believe he didn't taste it. He really didn't know shit about Sherry. Back upstairs for a bit. I will say, now knowing the context, that's got to be haunting. Uh-huh. Just to hear, like, the movement of them just being there. A live person. Oh, that's disturbing. And speaking of cyanide, it tastes like almonds. So if you're ever like drinking something that's not supposed to have almond in it. Hold on. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're good. Man's pleasure. What about a woman's? Hey, I thought we had a moment. Well, I'm nothing if not versatile. Yes, girl. Love it. What'd you do for a Klondike bar? Devil at the crossroads? It's all just fairy tales. Magic bean. We, we said that in the previous episode, right? You killed Rufus Griswold tonight, didn't you? And you're here building an alibi. This bartender would... They literally are fucking like, what the fuck is happening? King and queen of Fortunato, your birthright. CEO, COO, whatever you want. I would be freaked out. I'd be like, how the fuck do you know so much? Like, I gotta get out of here. Be altruistic, be charitable, or don't. I just want to see what you do. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Madeline, you better start getting getting it together. This is the moment. Luck meets opportunity. But what's the cost? How are they going to get on board? That's what I want to know. No such thing. For one, and even if there was... You already sold them tonight, one brick at a time. <laughs> no, no. Oh! She's so good. She's so good. Just before you would have died, Roderick. Just before you would have died. Because anyway, you started to get the illness. Your bloodline <gasps> dies with you. Oh! <gasps> he and sacrificed. That's why Madeline never had children. Oh, shit! She thought she could get out of it. Oh, my God. Together. You came into this world together, and you go out of it together, or no deal. I'm a creature of symmetry. What happens if you don't take the deal? Well, then they'll pro it'll probably be, you know, worker shows up to do the construction. They're like, hey, oh, I never she's finished telling them, wall. like, they're, yeah. they're going to be out it anyways. Yeah. Sure, yet to be born, they will live a blessed, privileged life and depart the stage together. I can't believe they just sacrificed their children. Yeah, I. <sighs> Oh, my God. And the way that they are, like, justifying it by saying, well, we'll just give them a good life while they're alive. Yeah. And the, the thing is, like, he presently has two children already. <laughs> That's a done deal. Then say it. You have a deal. You too, Cleopatra. Madeline was not sure about it. You have a deal. I like that Verna did that because it's like, Madeline, you always kind of like the woman behind the curtains. A deal's a deal. All of oh. Tonight. Oh my God, this show, you're fucking gagging us. To the house of Usher. They Whose said it. Has come. Oh, we did it on point. I think, like, I could just see in her face, she's like, from minute one, how am I going to get out of this? At, well, she also was the first one, once she figured out who it was, was the most freaked out. We should settle up. We just did. 
Ooh. Oh, and the shot of the raven right there, girl. Fucking lady. Do you think she meant him? Oh my God. Oh, that, now that's spooky ooky. Uh-huh. And over the years, it was just a weird dream. Nothing more. Do you think his remains are still there? They might be. Oh, wow. What? Oh! <gasps> Not Pin actually fucking getting... He's gonna, like, whack her off. <gasps> Oh, Pim, I don't, I don't think you know what you're doing, girl. I'm leaving now. <laughs> wow, that <laughs> is amazing. I'm oh my God, he's, he's stunned, he's stunned. You're beautiful at what you do. Yeah, brava. Oil drum and uh, gets dropped 100 miles out. That's still the dance? I apologize. It's nothing personal. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. What's a whoopsie? The aurora above. What happens to you when the ashes are gone? Which is imminent, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening, so what are you gonna do? Like I said to one of my clients, when I'm done, you can stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and it won't cost you a thing. This is tough. Well, that is something that Trump famously said. I could stand in Fifth Avenue oh. and shoot somebody and nobody would say anything. Oh, shit. Out of Fortunato's ashes, or you can watch it fly away from a federal prison cell. This I can do. Wait, is she saying, yeah, what's the return? Death? And I won't be leveraged. No man or woman has leveraged me in 70 years of life. Oh, this is so sad. He has no one. This has been a pleasure. Wow. I'm speechless. I'm speechless. I'm speechless her too. Delivery. It's so fucking good. Give her. But it all the awards. I do want to give props to Mark Hamill here. Oh, of course. Because the way, oh, like you can come a long way from Luke Skywalker. <laughs> but just like the look in his face of like. I really have nothing. I have nothing to offer. Oh, he's and so he's serving too. I'm quick. I'm like, ugh, so good. Maybe it's a good thing for you. That place wasn't good, Grandpa. No, it wasn't. Now, is she part of the the children that also like? What are the what are the logistics here? You know, does she get to survive? I don't know. No, no way. Stop it right now. I mean, it shouldn't be on me to have to spell out the definition of the word bloodline, but. All right, hold up. Now she's reading me. She's like, Sergio, you didn't fucking know the rules. <laughs> Takes three years, more than a hundred skin grafts, physical therapy, reconstructive surgery, but she endures it. Well, because the mom, she tried to save her. And she's not part of the bloodline. Saves a lot of lives. Would you like to know how many? Dozens in the first year, and hundreds, thousands soon after. Oh my God, that's so amazing. That choice you made echoes through millions of lives. I thought you should know that. Wait, what are you talking about? Lenore Usher isn't dead. She is. She died earlier tonight. Oh my, no. Lenore bought a little bit ago. I guess the goddamn thing was activated because it's been texting me. Oh. Yeah. Never mind. Some nonsense. How'd you know that? It's the Raven. Upon a midnight dreary. While I pondered. While I pondered. Weak and weary. Weak. Why am I getting emotional? I don't know why. Oh, my heart. No. Oh, 
this is fucking crazy right now. And that the statue that it's sitting on is also from the poem. <gasps> Floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. God fucking damn it. This show is so good. <laughs> Haven't we? Oh. That was the whole point. Ooh, not the slices on his stomach. Ooh, gruesome. Way. I reached in and I snuffed out those flames in their backs, in their joints. You know what sucks? Is that he had two kids, but then he just had to keep reproducing. Like, come on. Don't kid a kidder. Did you drive here like that? You fucking tell him, Verna. Take a look. <gasps> what the fuck was that? New one every five minutes, just in the States, but... Open it. Fuck. She is showing the people that he killed with Ligodone. One last look at your great tower. Oh my fucking god. That's your true monument, Roderick. Out there, it's a wonder of the world. I mean, Verna is fucking like sticking mm. the knife even further in. Like, fuck you, dude. Our business is almost done. You're going to call August Dupin and ask him to meet you. Okay, so then what? Is it really just like a confession, I guess? I'm just hoping August is okay. Oh my God. Oh wait, no, this is not right now. Okay, we're catching up with Madeline something we're meant to wrap up drink you know what yes why the fuck not <laughs> yeah got nothing else to lose i believed in enough to get an iud and you still wouldn't glove up with the fucking stewardesses well i was who i was hey she was trying to help him out people they want an entire meal for five dollars in five minutes and then they complain it's made of shit and plastic <laughs> Even to the end, she has no sympathy. No. Well, I think it's because she did exactly what the deal was. She lived the life that she wanted to to the fullest. The autonomy rips the liberty away from women, shreds not just their choice, but their future, their potential. Preach. All, all right, Madeline. Let's not hide here in the basement like you've got something to be ashamed of. No, not us. You and me against the world. I think he drugged her. She's gonna have to look me straight in the eyes. Fight her to the end. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. And she had no fucking clue. She couldn't even taste it. The words that she spoke about mm -hmm. the guy. You are Madeline fucking Usher. Bravo to her. She fucking killed it in this fucking role. I sent her off like a queen. Queen Tusret. She's still alive. She's still alive. Oh my God. And with the things they buried them with, things they needed in the afterlife, she'll have everything she needs down there. No bueno, no bueno. It takes a little getting used to. Oh Lord. Are you sure she was dead? You know, maybe not. Oh, girl, these are things we need to check. Yeah. On a checklist, girl. Hoggy, I'm sorry for all the times I inconvenienced you. And that is a lot, especially tonight. Oh, I promised my confession. She got out. She got out. I knew I would climb to the top of the tower on a pile of corpses. And we told them. Oh my god, I'm literally nervous. They could have sold it. Oh! 
Oh my god! That is fucking crazy! Uh -huh. But also fucking cool! Just like their mom. Yo, the bit get the fuck out! The fall of the, the House of, of the Usher. House of Usher. Oh, oh, Queen Verna, Queen Verna, up there. Silently over the fragments of the House of Usher. Oh, girl. Gotta get my bearings. Inherited everything, oh. and she completely dissolved it. Fortunato Pharmaceuticals was shuttered. Fuck yeah, Juno. Every dollar went for rehabilitation programs, addiction and recovery research, <gasps> and... Good for her. Martha Pym was arrested a few weeks later after Camille's former assistants turned over a mountain. Oh, shit. The assistants. Yeah, you kind of have to, like, the NDAs weren't going to be ironclad like that. Goodbye, Roderick. I'm going home to my husband, my Aww. kids, their kids. Yeah, you, you had a long night. It's been a long, probably a couple of years. Thy soul shall find itself alone. Dupin, I would keep walking, girl. Don't mess with that. And their will shall overshadow thee. Be still. Oh. Down from their high thrones in heaven, with light like hope to mortals given. Oh, this is cool. Like mm -hmm. collecting all the things. And a fever which would cling to thee forever. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> a mystery of mysteries. Oh, girl, not at us! We didn't do anything wrong! Oh my god. That was so. The fall of Usher. Good. The fall of the House of Usher. <sighs> oh my god! Alright, guys, so that was our reaction to the fall of the House of Usher, episode 8, The Raven, which is aka the finale of this season, of this story. How did you feel overall? I am. Um speechless this was phenomenal One i could feel you being shows. gagged and like goosebump ridden <laughs> one of the best shows i've ever seen and i don't even know what to say i love this it's this like was, where do you start yeah seriously i mean at some point we do have three stories that i can cover super fast yeah we need to be really really fast because there's a, there's a lot to unpack here yes. which we may or may not do a podcast episode about this if if you guys really want us to talk about it a little bit more but one thing i did want to correct really quickly um so uh annabelle lee i think what they were trying to tell us was that she later took her life yes which I, I mistake it. I thought they did it, but I think it was just like when she turned around. I think you're I think you're correct that that was like after he took everything from her. Yeah. Oh, and it's just so sad. There's so many like in this one, innocent lives. As in in their in their in their lives. Yeah. Not like, you know, everyone else with like the whole Ligadone situation, but like in their lives, like Annabelle Lee was innocent and you know she was very very affected by what he did especially when when she was saying like how could i compete how can i do that she just wanted the best for him the best for their family and this is what ended up happening um and then also for lenore which was just that itself oh my god it made me cry it, when oh when, when she was Berna like was going through like the effect that she had by it's like i want you to know this before this happens and she didn't explain exactly but like as an audience you know what that meant verna was very very affected by it and being like you did something right you are not like the rest of them and this pains me but the you know the deal is the deal and he knew he like your your you know your grandfather knew that yeah um it was just oh that was so fucking good i mean they they knew what they signed up for 
Yeah, and unfortunately she had to go. And I wasn't right before we were like, does she live? Do we know? I don't know. Um, oh, and then it really gagged you when the the text came up as nevermore. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to like? Do you want to break down the Raven? First? Yes. So we can start with the Raven. Okay. The Raven is a very short poem, and essentially, it is the the narrator is a person. Uh, presumably a man who is basically just sitting alone in his study at night and he hears a tapping at the door and it turns out that a raven flies into the room and sits on a pallid bust of Pallas, which is another name is. for <laughs> Athena. That was the Oh, okay. That was the bust that we saw over the over the fireplace. And uh and basically the raven just says nevermore that's the only thing the raven ever says is nevermore which essentially just means like never again like this is over mm -hmm. forever and so at first he's just like sitting pondering about his lost love lenore and he starts asking the raven like am i like is is she ever going to come back is it like am i ever going to be happy again like all like basically and the raven just keeps saying nevermore Nevermore, and that's where the the phrase "quoth the raven" or "quoth the raven" nevermore, yeah. because that's all the raven says. And so it made so much sense when the texts were just over and over and over and over. Nevermore, nevermore, oh, nevermore, nevermore. Now I get why you were like, "Oh shit, this is where that comes to play." Yes, and so that's that's the raven. That's how it. Uh, that's how it ends. It's just like. He keeps asking questions and they, they'll just be like, never more, never more. Never well, because more. at some point he like, he starts cursing the raven and says like, why are you here? Why are you haunting me? Like, just go away. And the raven says, never more. As in, you'll never be rid of this thought, this loss. Oh, man. And it may, like, I I was secretly hoping that Lenore would survive. But <laughs> in order for it to really fulfill the poem... Lenore needed to be lost. Well, I mean, also, it seems like they were, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like they were retelling, like, actually speaking the lines of the poem. Yes, in, in a couple in the, places they were. Yeah, okay. Okay, awesome. Uh, what were the other two stories? All right, so there, there were two other stories. The first is the cask of Amontillado. And I'm so happy that we can finally talk about this because the cask of Amontillado is really heavily referenced especially in this last episode, but across the entire series. So in the cask of Amontillado, we start off with the narrator saying, I've hated this dude forever. He's just like the worst. What dude? Me? Is he talking about me? No, he's not talking about you. Okay, good. So it turns out the person who the narrator hates his name is Fortunato. Oh, <gasps> I was wondering that name sounded so familiar. Not uh -huh. that I knew, but like, so, he hates Fortunato, and he wants to make this guy pay. And so, he meets up with Fortunato at a carnival, and Fortunato is dressed in the standard Italian carnival mask, where it's like the jester face with the three <gasps> points and the bells and stuff. Oh, that's giving me chills. Yeah. And so, Fortunato's already really drunk, and... And the narrator entices Fortunato to come over to his house, being like, I have this cask of Amontillado, which is this really rare wine. And Fortunato is like, no, you don't. There's no way. I know wine. You don't have that. And so he basically plays off Fortunato and manipulates him to get him to come over to his house. And he's and like... And they have passionate sex. No. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Uh, but they, he basically tricks Fortunato by going deeper and deeper and deeper into the catacombs underneath his house. And he is, like, Fortunato is really drunk. And he keeps, like, stopping and saying, oh, let's sample this wine as we go on our way to, like, keep getting him more and more drunk. And so then, eventually, he, uh, he waits for Fortunato to pass out. And he's like, this is my time. I've waited forever and I can finally get rid of this guy. And so he takes him to an area where there were some uh, some construction going on, and he bricked him into the wall. And 
the way that they describe it is they just have like one little candle just like they had in the show and uh and Fortunato is like just waking up and he's like, wait, what the fuck is going on? And he just keeps putting the bricks and eventually all he hears is the ringing behind the brick wall. And then eventually it just stops. Oh my God. That and is so freaking cool that Mike Flanagan was able to work that in to this series. You could have honestly called the last episode also the cask of Amadiato. I don't yeah. even know if I'm saying that right. Well, and it's so it's so crazy too because the themes of this like w this long revenge plot that we we are just gonna be buddy buddy and be friends and like get on the good side of the CEO and then strike right when we have the opportunity. It's it just makes so much sense. Yeah, it's like when when musicals do jukebox musicals and somehow the songs make sense even though some of them don't. Um, <laughs> But also Edgar Allan Poe is kind of like a walking like red flag tale. It's just like, don't trust anybody with your drinks out there. Yeah. Is that the end? That's the end. And the third is of course, the fall of the house of Usher. And in the fall of the house of Usher, uh, Roderick and Madeline are the ushers. And Poe says early on that the house of Usher has both come to mean the family and the physical house to mm. the local community. Their recluses, their family was known for being like really smart and talented and artistic. And now it's just the two of them. And Roderick reaches out to his friend and says, hey, can you come? Like, I want to talk to you basically. Mm. I want to catch up, it's been forever. And uh, so the friend goes over, he's talking to Roderick. They see Madeline in the background, but Madeline is like pale and really sickly. And Roderick explains that they're both dying. They both, they're both sick. And, uh, and then while the friend is there, Madeline dies. And Roderick takes the body down to the family, uh, the family burial area, which was in the basement behind a copper door. And uh, basically like, takes care of the body okay, and, and lays her to rest. And then they're talking and they start hearing this banging. And mostly it's just Roderick that hears it at first, that he hears this banging and he starts to be afraid that he had buried his sister alive. And so at some point she breaks out of the area, barges into the room, like, her eyes are wild. She's She has so much like life and power and energy to her, despite the fact that earlier we saw her like basically be a walking corpse. Mm -hmm. And she tackles Roderick and chokes him to death. And the friend runs out of the house just in time to see the house literally physically crumble to the ground. Overall, just to wrap up this series, I mean, we talked about it at the very beginning. We weren't really sure we were coming in to, no. I, had, I had just heard somewhere that they might be retellings of the stories, but I didn't know that for sure. And I have been blown away over this entire series about how well these have been taken off of the page and reinterpreted in a way that makes sense today and really brings the spirit and the character of the work to the screen. I can't say enough good things about this. I think this deserves to win like every yeah, award imaginable. It's so good. I really don't want it to be, because I know like it happened during the strikes and um, I know that, you know, it was quickly put on Netflix because you could just really binge watch it. But I don't want people to forget about this show. This show is so good. It literally, it was such a journey. It was, there's so much horror. There was so much comedy. There was, um, literally disturbing things happening, but also a lot of a lot of gore, mm -hmm. more gore than I thought I thought I was gonna expect because I didn't really see a lot of gore in the house of haunting on at Haunting Hill. Yeah, um, you know Mike Flanagan's like uh, other Netflix show because we did see that and that was amazing too. It was and um, very scary, terrified me, super in scary. Spots. But for this one, I was like, oh, we're we're seeing lots, of, we're seeing guts, we're seeing choppings, we're seeing it was crazy. But I honestly really really loved it but also this was something that i appreciated about this journey specifically and especially with you guys who are watching it um 
I knew that Cody liked Edgar Allan Poe, but for like the amount of knowledge that you took from it and like what you knew and what you like taught us all, I honestly super appreciated that. Like, oh, thank I, you. it was so cool to kind of see you in your element. And that's something like I learned about Cody. And like, I think we all learned about Cody right now. So I think we, we, we should give him props for really, really taking up, like taking us on a journey that added that little bit of extraness that we needed on the, like during these reactions. I definitely think that I took a lot out of a lot more out of the show than I would have if I didn't have that knowledge yeah. of the story ahead well, of time. Well, I did it and then I, you proved me right. I was like, "Oh my god, this is awesome." I looked forward to hearing like the retellings of the Edgar Allan Poe stuff after the episode. Um overall, it's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. Totally loved it. And before we go, Praise to Mike Flanagan, first of all, fucking phenomenal. And again, we're serious about if you guys want us to watch another Mike Flanagan show, we're thinking Midnight Mass, let us know because it, we've seen it in the comments. But also this cast was fucking killer. Yes. Everyone brought it, but especially like two of my favorites so far. One, Mary McDonald mm -hmm. killed it loved it and even that last performance um where she got, came out and was like in the fucking look like she was alive right at the yeah. end like she was yeah. actually alive and was like going after her uh her brother and that kind of proved where she was like you guys kind of will be the death of each other mm -hmm. you guys will die together um she was so good every single line she just ate it up and also the actress who plays younger version of her they were they must have i don't know what they did but they knew exactly what they were doing right mm -hmm. like they were those characters very similar yeah it, the acting was so similar and they knew the mannerisms and of course carla Giugino, who plays verna praise be unto her oh yeah. i bow down i bow down she's my queen she the amount of work that she put into this show, mm -hmm. the amount of Vernussi that she put into the show was so fucking phenomenal. And I better see her name in the Emmy list when it comes to Emmy time, because she deserves it. Absolutely. She put in so much work in all the characters that you get to do, all the different things, all, oh, amazing. All right, guys, so that will be it for us. We want to thank you guys for joining us on this journey of the fall of the House of Usher. We will see you in the next video, in the next movie reaction here on our channel. So please stick around. But of course, let us know your review of the fall of the House of Usher down in the comments. Uh, we would love to hear from you. But until next time, we have been your source for heart analysis. Criticism. And spooky. Okay. And sometimes kooky. Entertainment. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.